Hello and welcome back for a webinar on Emerology episode 5. My dear students, we are studying Emerology for the last 5 days. And today is the last day of Emerology. And you can see through this slide how happy these guys are because see, they are all singing and playing drums. And uh, that is the state of uh, you all also because we are finishing Emerology today. And uh, my dear friends, I I have been uh, dealing with embryology for last you know, five days, including today. And most of the basic part of embryology we are dealing with actually, as such, we have completed embryology as study itself. But we want to understand some you know, miscellaneous part of embryology. And that is what we call remaining things about embryology, which are of our interest. So embryology episode five, let us begin uh, with today's topic and the today's topic you know is uh, twins and multiple births okay so on the first day we studied history of embryology and gametes and fertilization on the second day we studied marula blastula and implantation on the third day we studied formation of the germinal disc uh, and uh, trilaminar disc uh, on the for uh, third day fetal membranes and placenta on the fourth day and today we will study twins and multiple births and related you know part to embryology like you know miscellaneous portion of recall so let us begin with multiple births uh, first we will talk about twins you can see through this image that uh, there are twins here and uh, twins means zure okay so twins can be monozygotic or dizygotic. That means from one zygote, you will get two fetus, two babies ultimately. And dizygote means there are two separate zygote, which are which is very rare actually. So fertilization takes separately because uh, sometimes uh, the female may give two ovulations at a time, at a time or within span of some time, one from left, one from right, something something you know abnormal can happen unusual can happen rather than abnormal and there you will get dizygotic twins monozygotic twins are quite common because you i have told you after the formation of blastula you know the inner cell mass if it divides instead of multiplying if it gets divided into two you will get monozygotic twins but if it divides into more than two then you will get uh, uh, polyzygotic uh, you know twins one one zygote can give you three babies four babies five babies and so on monozygotic multiple birth that is what is called as and polyzygotic multiple multiple birth means more than one zygote two zygotes three zygotes four zygotes in that case you will get multiple birth plus mixed multiple birth so mixed multiple birth is something you know very very unusual that means mother is one and uh, you know more than one father and more than one zygote so it's very unusual so anything can happen as the net nature scores we are uh, it is astonishing to all of us if it happens so always we get you know surprised if there is a twin in somebody's house if there is triplet in somebody's house tire and all all that stuff you know let us talk about dizygotic twins. Dizygotic means there are two separate zygotes. Means there are two separate ovum and there are two separate ovum are fertilized by separate spermatozoo. So you will get two zygotes separate and those zygotes will eventually develop, develop into blastocysts separately. They will have, you know, separate amnion, separate chorion and in each, you know, what do you call two chorion, two, uh, two amnion, two placenta like this. And in case of monozygotic, uh, monozygotic twins, it can be separation at the level of blastos, blastomere or at the level of ICM or at the level of primitive streak. And following things will happen in case of each of them, like blastosis, two amnion, two chorion, two placenta. In case of ICM, two ICM, two amnion, two chorion, one placenta. In case of two primitive streak, one amnion, one chorion, one placenta. So this is uh, this differs from the in, uh, from each case. Okay, so monozygotic twin twins means ultimately from one zygote you get twins, two fetuses, and later on two babies. And what is multiple birth overall? If you see, 
in a normal course you get one zygote when uh, uh, when a spermatozoo fertilizes an ovum and one single cell stage of life is formed that is called as a zygote we have studied it many times and monozygotic twins means the the twins are identical because they are from one zygote so one ovum and one spermatozoo and when the ovum is fertilized it splits into two identical you know cells directly separate right directly separate from even from the zona of pellucida get separated here and always the babies are of the same gender uh, and same uh, and uh, look identical in this case inner mass uh, get separated separated from each other totally so they are uh, so they are having same gender because monozygote means right at the time of zygote the gender is determined and the uh, you know uh, most of the physical traits are also determined so they they look alike okay like a judwa or gita or sita you must have seen some of the stuff in the in the films now dizygotic twins means they are fraternal twins here there are two ova and there are two different spermatozoa and that is why the babies look different may be of different or the same gender they may be same they may be of same gender means boy boy or of different gender boy girl so up to dizygote at more than dizygote uh, uh, sorry more than twins now we'll go to multiple births so they may be monozygotic or polyzygotic so multiple births means more than two babies may be identical Uh, may be fraternal or may be both or may be of different or the same gender okay and multiple birth is a big list apart from this multiple births and twins we have uh, some uh, uh, you know uh, what do you call pitiful twins like conjoined babies conjoined means the babies which are attached to each other and they are also called as siamese babies siamese babies siam means uh, the the olden name of thailand in thailand conjoined babies are found more because of their atmospheric circumstances monozygote splits apart but the separation is not completed now this will happen only in a monozygote because from one zygote instead of getting full separation like monozygotic twins they are not se fully uh, separated they the babies remain joined at some part of their bodies i will show you some pictures and they are uh, you can call them one or two in one like so they are called as conjoined babies or siamese babies okay and, and what are the factors responsible for the uh, multiple births multiple births are all unusual things commonly there is one baby in case of human beings per pregnancy but if it is twin or more than two multiple births that is because of certain history in the family the history in certain families increase hormone naturally more than one ovum is released at a time because one ovum is required here the two ovum three ovum they come at a time so that is hormonal in, uh, you know uh, what you call insurgency fertility drugs also lead to such kind of conditions like more than one ovum is released at a time and sperms are in millions you know those and it usually happens in a female who is above 32 years up to 36 years so the late, the late marriages and late you know uh, child bearing age will lead to twins mostly likely of likelihood of multiple twins in case of you know different uh, races in the world like twins in the blacks they are 1s to 73 in whites they are 1s to 93 so whites get more twins triplets is in the world is about 1 in 10000 quadruplets if you consider the whole world is 1 in 6 6 lakh 20000 and so on so the number of babies if they increase there there is a uh, you know it goes on becoming more rare and rare but how far it will go what is the world record that we'll see now here you see one image of uh, twins these are twins because they are separate but they are embracing each other so these are twins and here this is another picture which is also of twins you can see them separately they are uh, lying on each other and sleeping on each other rather you can say these are the twins and uh, these are more than twin so there are three of them you call them as triplet or they can commonly called as tv okay uh, this is also quite common but here there is a quadruplet quadruplet means there are four babies from one pregnancy so this becomes 
little surprising to us. So as we go further, the, the, the thing will become more rare and rare and rare. Uh, just see next uh, picture here. And these are five and uh, that is why uh, they are called as pentaplates. Okay, pentaplates, one, two, three, four, five. And another is uh, six here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So they are called as hexaplates. So now you will get uh, seven, then you can get eight, then you can get nine, you can get 10. How far you can get? So uh, you know that Kauravas were 101, but then they were not from one pregnancy. We don't know the details of that. And then Dhrutrashtra and uh, Mary had 101 children. How, uh, how it was possible, I know, but it's historical or uh, whatsoever mythical thing. But actual, actually what has happened in the world and what are the proofs in front of us, that I'll show you. So I'll take you directly to the last, you know, the last recorded pregnancy in the world. Uh, woman gives a birth to 11 babies. Okay, so 11 babies is a world record. And this world record has uh, happened in India. This is a this is an Indian woman. You can see with a baby, so big uh, abdomen because so many babies were there. And without a cesarean section, she was delivered, and uh, they, these all babies were alive. But they are they were very small as compared to you know normally born uh, uh, one single baby. So eleven babies. So this is actual you know. Uh, you know, what you call uh, vasticity of uh, multiple birds. Yes. Now we'll go to conjoined babies. I talked about Siamese babies. That means babies are joined. If you see this baby, the baby on its right arm below the, you know, uh, there's armpit, there is another neck and head here. So this is a conjoined baby. This is a very pitiful condition for uh, the, for those babies also and for the family and for the world also. Here you can see another picture of uh, conjoined babies that is Siamese babies where the lower portion is common, upper portion is different. And here you can see uh, quite you know viable and survived a picture of uh, Siamese twin babies and they are Indian and they are living together for so many years now almost they are more than uh, around about 10 years you can see look at them and their heads are joined together. That means they, the embryo at that table did not split and they are living a very pitiful condition. And my dear students, if you want to separate them, the doctors have to think again and again whether to go for a surgery. In case of surgery, there are chances of losing at least one child. It is very difficult to give life to both of them, a separate life to both of them. One of the child may die both may also die and very rarely if the vital things are not you know joined they may be separated by surgical intervention only there is no other uh, you know treatment for that and secondly you have to leave it uh, as it is uh, what for whatsoever however many years they they live their life so it is a very pitiful thing Siamese babies Actually, today's topic uh, is, uh, I told you that we are considering overall because already delivery has taken place yesterday itself. We are, we are trying to learn the different things which are remaining uh, apart from, you know, uh, normal course of uh, embryology. Now, human development, if you consider the gestation period lasts for 266 days uh, from fertilization to birth. So it is 38 weeks. If you consider uh, 40 weeks, it becomes 280 days. So you should be able to know, able to understand the period in terms of months, weeks, and days. So it is 266 days and uh, what do you call weeks, it is 38 weeks and months, it's nine. But nine and, uh, nine, nine and 15 days plus 280 days and uh, 40 weeks, this is because of last menstrual period. Organogenesis means development of the organs and organ systems which begins with the nervous system first. So the nervous system is the highest controlling and coordinated system. So it begins to form first. That is why we yesterday we studied, uh, day before yesterday we studied neurulation. Okay. After gastrulation we came to neurulation. So remember that. Now you think on this. Do all animals have the same gestation period? No. 
okay because dogs have a different gestation period cats have different gestation period elephants have different gestation period you know that okay how many days a uh, uh, you know female uh, elephant takes to you know remain pregnant and give birth and a dog takes how many months that you know so every animal has got a different gestation period and human development periods uh, continue is a continuous process that includes three main periods first is progenesis next is prenatal period and next is postnatal period progenesis means uh, gametogenesis what we have studied in the, the first lecture before uh, prior to embryology Pro progenesis is a period of maturation of specialized genetic cells that is gametes this maturation process is called as spermatogenesis in males and oogenesis in female and prenatal period means before birth prenatal period begins when an oocyte from female fertilized by the sperm from male with the formation of zygote and the main stages of fertile uh, you know uh, prenatal period are fertilization then cleavage and gastrulation and neurulation formation of ax axial organs like notochord neural tube primordial gut then histogenesis organogenesis systemogenesis this we have studied for last four days so you remember all the stages of prenatal period and postnatal period means this period occurs after the birth up to the death so the uh, the development never completes so all together we call it as a ontogenesis that also i told you on the first day so remember all this terminology now here you can see the prenatal development is in two parts first is embryonic development and second is fetal development so embryonic development takes place in first two months that is first eight weeks fertilization to eight weeks and fetal development takes from a ninth week up till the birth so the time period from fertilization to birth is called as a gestation that means in case of woman it is a pregnancy postnatal development takes after birth another terminology is trimester trimester means 3 months like semester is a 6 months so trimester is a 3 months the so whole pregnancy of 9 months is divided into three trimesters first trimester second trimester and third trimester first trimester is of first 3 months second trimester is of middle 3 months and third trimester is of last 3 months so all together 9 months so let us talk about first trimester what happens because first trimester means first week to 12th week and the size of the fetus is usually by the end of second uh, month uh, or third month it is 3 inches and weight is about 14 g and in this stage after zygote you know there is a cleavage implantation plastic placentation and embryogenesis almost the full embryo is formed basic organ plan and tissue is laid out multiple susceptible uh, most susceptible to damage is or disorder and organization at at this time whatever wrong whatever things go wrong if they go wrong in this period if this period is normal another remaining two trimesters are uh, non problematic so whatever problems arise they arise right from the time of zygote up to the completion of stage of embryogenesis okay now i'll go to the understanding of things which happen during the first trimester here first you see cleavage cleavage is taking place in case of mammal i am showing the last part is a part of place so this is in bird this is in amphibian this is in you know apoxius so we will consider only mammal here so by 8 weeks about 2 months all major organs are formed i showed in this image last time also 25 days is 3.5 cm 36 days we get 10 mm and on at the end of by the end of second month you get a 30 mm is 3 cm and uh, this is how the embryo of four weeks look like just have a have a look we'll have some pictures to uh, understand ourselves because through pictures we understand more this is a four week embryo here you can see embryo of uh, four to six weeks look at the difference okay here is a four here is a six how the things go on changing you know, day by day week by week for that purpose i'm showing you this Here you can see a 29 day embryo. 29 day embryo means one day less to one month. This is when the heart starts pumping. Remember, so only in the right in the first week, first month itself, by the end of fourth week of intrauterine life, heart starts pumping. About uh, uh, say one month. In, in other words, one month. So about four weeks. And uh, by this time, uh, the uh, 
embryo is of half centimeter size. Okay, half centimeter is five millimeter. Imagine how much is the heart. Okay, the life has been formed on the first day, so there is uh, there is nothing you know uh, surprising thing because it's all living, it's a living thing. So it has to have heart and has to pump some some day. So this is the time where heart starts pumping. This uh, this is an embryo of six week old. Here is the mostly the embryo is looking like a human being uh, by six weeks. Okay, that means in the second month, a blood vessel that will become hard begins pulsating around this one. by seven week. Actually, fully the heart starts pumping seven weeks. So seven week is a another landmark here. Legs, feet, and web toes have begun to develop. So, what you call webbed toes, the fingers are not separated, but they get webbed. And this is the time, seventh week. The embryo is of two and a half centimeters long, so 25 millimeter. The embryo by eighth week becomes recognizable as a human being. You can see this is eight weeks embryo, means completion of uh, second month. So, our embryogenesis is complete here. The embryo now weighs one gram and is one inch long. So one gram and one inch long. So it is uh, compared with this picture. All the basic organs and body parts of human being are formed except sex organs. Okay. The tail is no longer visible. So every embryo has got a tail. That is the proof of, you know, uh, what you call uh, human being becoming an erect animal from terrestrial animals like you know monkeys and all them all of them because they have got tail and tail is no longer visible and now incorporated into the lower spine so we got the lower spine in form in terms of coccyx after sacrum there is a coccyx the placenta also forms during this early period itself it is a mass of tissue attached to the uterine while that acts as a life support system to the fetus here you can see the placenta umbilical cord uterine wall womb womb means uh, uterus Connects the circ uh, circulatory system with the mother. The embryo and the placenta are connected by the umbilical cord. This also we have studied. By ninth week, the brain grows dramatically, six times in size now, and becomes responsive during this period. The nervous system is becoming responsive by ninth week. So at the age of 22 weeks, the fetus reaches the age of viability. So if accidentally or if by any other, you know, what you call circumstances, if there is a delivery by 22 weeks, the fetus will be viable. Viable means it can live, which is the age of preterm baby. So we call them as a preterm baby. When they complete 20, uh, total 38 weeks, we call them full term baby. So whatever is preterm is before 38, but up to the 22 weeks, up before 22 weeks, there is a problem in viability. That means they may not survive, but 22 weeks, 23, 24 onwards, they may survive. There is only a 50% chance uh, survival rate at 46 weeks. So as you go towards less you know, weeks, there are less chances of survival. Here you can see three months fetus, which is a six centimeter. And here you can see the late fifth month fetus, which is about 19 centimeters. I'm showing you the comparative pictures to show you the growth of uh, fetus. Now we have come to second and third trimester. Now second and third trimester is mostly for the increase of size and maturity. So there is, there is nothing much happening this time. Only this period is given for proper growth of a fetus. After the end of eight weeks, fetal development begins because it is called as a fetal age from uh, ninth week to the, to the ninth month, completion of ninth month. And uh, by week 12, all organ systems are laid out. Most tetragens not little anymore, but produce major defects. So tetragen may cause effects, uh, defects on the child, on the fetus. Third trimester, mostly for size increase and maturity. So whatever uh, whatever remains actually the third third trimester last three months means uh, what you call uh, eight uh, seven eight nine so by the end of six months everything is complete so seventh eight nine seven eight, the baby can take birth in seventh month nine, eighth month and ninth month so this is all they are preterm but if they complete nine month they become full term and nicely you know uh, what you call uh, matured fetus you get by nine month. 
and uh, if you want to compare more images of different weeks 14 to 16 weeks baby looks like this you can see this one here and uh, 24 to 28 weeks baby looks like this you can look at this baby looks a close up so 24 to 28 weeks another is uh, 36 to 38 weeks now 38 weeks means 266 days so this is a full term baby here now ready to get you know birth and this is the duration of fetal period nine weeks to 38 weeks after the conception until birth so either 20 week fetus here nine months fetus here now it is ready for delivery so nine months baby is a uh, head side down towards the end of pregnancy space is at the premium and the placenta is finding increasing default difficult to meet the needs of the fetus so the placenta capacity gets over here baby has to take a birth now approximately nine months after conception the process of birth begins a uh, difficult transition must be achieved with the baby's systems taking over many of the responsibility that were made previously by the placenta and mother now baby has to cope up on itself after the birth after the birth so that is why the baby as soon as it comes out it has to cry aloud then only it is possible to breathe in because the respiration you know starts after the birth and he, this baby is ready for taking a birth and baby has taken a birth okay once again baby has taken a birth see how the baby is looking they are looking at you it's very happy that he has taken a birth and i am very happy that i have completed embryology today and uh, uh, i will have some uh, question and answers here which will make you think now you have to think at your end itself true or false you have to keep in mind and answer uh, the study of development begins at birth true or false at birth no it is not it is false okay it is false because the development begins at the moment of conception so development begins at the moments of conception means fertilization itself not at the birth at birth most of the things are completed now let's go for another question true or false 50 percent of fertilized ova are lost before woman finds out she is pregnant so woman doesn't know that she became pregnant and the was high good whatever it was formed it you know it it is uh, lost whether true or false so it's new for you it is true yes but there are there are so many cases this will happen thing. Okay. next <clears throat> approximately 20 percent of all embryos are aborted spontaneously or aborted spontaneously true because this is this is happens mostly due to chromosomal abnormality so most of the abnormal babies they are aborted aborted mean ab abortion spontaneously apop abortion hun no cross lele embryo apop jata pan because but 20% uh, of all embryos what about 80% so 80% if they remain in that if there are chromosomal abnormalities they will take birth and i have shown you if they take birth you have seen lots of syndromes in the in the study of genetics so don't forget that research shows that fetus can develop sight very early in the womb sight means is it is true or false uh, it's false because uh, there is no environment inside the womb so it's a it's always false okay now next is Fetus spend roughly 90% of the time in the womb asleep. True or false? So it is true. The fetus spend roughly 90% of time in the womb asleep because there is nothing else to do. Just grow, grow and grow. Eat, eating and everything excretion is done through the umbilical cord. This is like an ICU. ICU. The patients are admitted and they sleep in the ICU. And the next is it was thought that emotions were only expressed at birth true or false this is true or false so after birth only you can express emotion not inside the womb though the baby looks like smiling inside the womb this is actually false because this might imply that emotions are present from birth or possibly the pre-birth with neuronal development but emotions such as uh, the social smile occur only after the exposure to the environment. So there is no exposure to the environment 
before birth so emotions are impossible so these are the some of the general you know uh, what do you call conceptions which uh, many students have so i have taken those also and if you have any questions you can put those questions before me at the end of this uh, webinar and to the last day of uh, of our uh, what a series of webinars so you can ask the questions and uh, you can see uh, this baby is smiling because it knows that we have finished embryology you can look at it so cute baby and smiling at you and is asking you whether you understood embryology how did we take birth so one time you were also like and uh, thank you thanks for thank you so much uh, for my webinar for the last uh, so many uh, so many days means how many days last five days today's webinar and the series of uh, webinar on embryology and uh, we will come again with the uh, with some other topic in next week till then goodbye to all of you and have a nice day hello sir hello sir lot. thank you thanks a lot sir ek question hai chare sir